evening here at Rogers Center. The Angels are in town. Mike Schosser's ball club has had a disappointing season, much like the Blue Jays. In fact, their record identical, 67 and 76. Now it's time to thank Book at the starting line. I'm brought to you by Quaker State. Real, durable oil. Top of the order, Colin Cowgill will lead off. Eric Ibar is the number two hitter. And then Mike Trout, and what a year he has put together again. 11-game hit streak right at the end of the season. 432, 16 for 37 with three doubles, a triple and three RBIs. And then Josh Hamilton, big sign in the offseason as a free agent. He's had a down year, but against Mark Burley, he's hit the ball hard, a couple of doubles and a home run. What a consistent pitcher Mark Burley has been. 13th straight year with at least 30 starts as he gets ready for that 30th start here tonight. He has walked 80 fewer batters than he has struck out. That's a tidy two and a half to one strikeout to walk ratio. Exactly his major league average coming into this season. He has been very consistent. So Bradley is sad. He always works quickly. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. It's up and away for a ball. Colin Cowgill leading things off. Cowgill's 27 years old. He was picked up June 25th in a deal with the Mets. Comes out of Arizona, fifth round pick of the Diamondbacks, University of Kentucky in 2008. Ball is popped up. Shallow center field, and Anthony Ghost comes in, and Cowgill's retired, one down. Well, the defense for the Blue Jays has been almost as good as the starting pitching of late. Rajay Davis in left, Anthony goes in center, and Moises Sierra in right. Lori and Reyes on the left side of the infield. Goins and Lynn on the right side of the infield. And behind the plate is J.P. Aaron Seaver to handle a four-time goal glover. Mark Burley. And one of the guys who has played some heads-up defense right there, Ryan Goins, made a couple of outstanding plays in Minnesota. Especially that heads-up play and getting that runner at the plate that really preserved that shutout for the Blue Jays. Switch hitter Eric Ibar takes a strike from Burley. Ibar's the shortstop. Another good season for Ibar. 28 doubles and four triples to go along with the five home runs. He gets tied up with that inside pitch. Burley has had quite a run here at Rogers Center, and it has been a hitter's ballpark ever since it opened up. But he's 8-2 and two with a 272 ERA here at his home ballpark, Rogers Center. Last loss, July the 20th versus Tampa Bay, and he pitched decent, decent enough to win that game. Seven innings, gave up three earned runs in that ball game, and still lost. Ball is driven down the left side, hit well, but foul. So Burley is ahead 0-2, and he does that as well as anybody. That's hitters hit balls knowing that he's going to control where they're going to hit them. Get ahead early. Work quickly, get him in the swing mode, and you can expand the strike zone. You look at his numbers over his long career and how consistent he has been, and this year, right on track to do the exact same thing. This one's hit a little farther and fair, and this ball is gone. Eric Ibar, home run number six for the shortstop of the Angels. Score first against Mark Burley. One thing Burley has done recently is kept the ball in the ballpark, and Ibar just missed a home run on the previous pitch and got that one just inside the foul pole. The last time he gave up a home run, it was at New York. That was on August the 20th. Ball down and in, and, and Ibar just drops the barrel of the bat on that baseball and takes it out of the ballpark. Jason Nix was the last home run that he had given up, if you remember that one in that doubleheader game. Nix got a big home run late in the ball game against Burley. So Mike Trout bats. He has that 11-game hit streak where he's hit 432. Trout, the DH tonight, getting a chance to get him off his legs for at least one of these three games. It's the fifth time this season he has been the DH. I can tell you one thing, he doesn't like it. He's one for 13. Young guy, he wants to be out on the field, and certainly one of the best defenders to play any of the outfield positions, but Mike Sosher feels it's best at this time of the season to give him a start as the DH. He got a big road trip. They, they need him playing on the turf right here. Get him off one day, it's not that big of a deal. It's the second stop 
in a 10 game road trip for Mike Sosha's team. They lost in Minnesota in a makeup game last night. Well, I think this is going to be a great test for Mark Burley because they're facing a team offensively who has been scoring a lot of runs. Even without Pujols in the lineup and a couple of other injuries, guys out of the lineup, it's a team that's been scoring some runs and winning some ball games. And Mike Trout will take the walk. Burley really lost that one up and away, so it's a one out walk for Burley. This is what I'm talking about right here. Burley's been great over his last nine. 6 0 with a 202 earned run average. He's hit his spots. He's kept the ball down. But right now he's facing a good team, a very hot team in the Los Angeles Angels. So it's going to be interesting. Let's see who comes out on top on this one. The Angels have played much better, much like the Blue Jays, but it's all after the fact, of course. They had higher expectations. Powerful Mark Trumbo, the first baseman, steps in. Trumbo has 31 homers for the season. Ian Trout certainly really present a great combination for their long term future. A couple of young guys that can really play. Ball is driven to the gap in right center. Sierra over. It's over his head, off the wall. Trout had to make sure that ball wasn't caught, so he had to hold up. He has to stop at third. And that ball was drilled. Sierra once again taking kind of a shallow route to that ball, and it sailed over his head. Yeah, he's going to find out at the big leagues here that the hitters hit the ball a little bit harder. It goes a little further. You can see the angle that he took was straight across instead of a little bit deeper, and I think he would have caught it. You can see that ball over his head right over his shoulder the angle not very good this is what you were talking about with trout he gets out there even with his great speed he's not going to be able to score from first base on the double sierra got the ball in quickly second and third one out for josh hamilton we had mentioned that hamilton has hit well against mark burley four for 12 with a home run Angels have scored in the first. He can be very careful here. Josh Hamilton is a free swinger. He'll swing out a lot of pitches off the plate. And this is where you can go ahead and nibble. If you end up walking them, not that big of a deal. Nobody hurt. Set up the double play. Hamilton chased and fouls it off. You're right about that. He's got some room to work. Right-handed hitter is on deck. Chris Ionetta, the catcher, but certainly this is the important at bat so far. Ionetta, you set up the double play. You might be able to get out of the inning with minimal damage. There's a base hit to right. Trout comes in to score. Trumbo is being waved home, and the throw will go to second. So Hamilton delivers the. Two runs single to right, and the Angels have scored three here in the fourth. First. Mark Burley came into this game on a hot streak, but he's facing a hot team. They've got a single, a double, a home run already this inning. Trying to expand just a little bit, and he caught too much of the plate. He's a free swinger. He'll go up there. You can pitch to him. Finds the hole in right field for a couple of RBIs. So it's three to nothing Angels. This is the first game in seven games that the Blue Jays haven't scored first. Ionetta fouls it back. Much like the Blue Jays, this has been a disappointing season for the Angels. They had high expectations, of course. They signed Pujols last offseason. Then this previous offseason, they signed Hamilton. So everybody expected that they were going to be a contending club in the West. Yeah, don't forget about C.J. Wilson also. Who they signed a couple of winners ago along with Pujols. And it's been a disappointing season. The numbers that the, the Angels have are almost identical with the Blue Jays. Up and down. When you look at their pitching ranks, the Angels are 13th, the Blue Jays are 11th. Hitting. The teams are almost identical in their batting ranks. For home runs, power runs per ball game. Really kind of eerie the way it's so similar. Hamilton was leaning towards second. He wasn't thinking about running. 
He just expected Burley to throw it home. One other place where they're very identical, defensively. Blue Jays have committed 101 errors. The Angels, 99, right next to each other on the list. Chris Ionetta, what a chew. He hits the ball down the right side into the seats. Ionetta came through the Rockies organization. He's 30 years old. Last year, he dealt with wrist injuries, missed 67 games during the regular season. Another throw to first. And Hamilton's a little bit late getting back. He has about a four-foot lead. If that, he's got to listen to his first base coach, Alfredo Griffin. You can hear him yelling over here to get back. There's Alfredo. You see, not a real big lead for Hamilton. There's another base hit into right off the end of the bat. Sierra will play it on a hop. Ionette is aboard. Four hits in the inning. We mentioned how well Burley had pitched in this ballpark coming into this game. Eight and two. Looked like a change up right off the end of the bat. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that if you're Mark Burley. You make a good pitch, and Ionetta gets just enough of wood on the ball to get a base hit. Not much you can do about that. Let's take a look at the scouting report for Mark Burley while we have a check a second here. Slider, they're hitting 304. That's more of a cutter type of thing. You'll see the fastball and you'll see the changeup from Burley. His off-speed pitch has been better in the second half of the season. He's using it more. They were hitting 315 the first half of the season against Mark Burley's off-speed pitch. Now it's down to 239. I think he's going to have to use that a little bit now here to get out of this problem. Cole Calhoun, the right fielder, takes his strike. Calhoun has really been a nice pickup for these Angels. Come up and done a good job hitting 287. Calhoun is batting 368 against lefty pitching. He has absolutely destroyed the Blue Jays in that four-game series out in Los Angeles when we played out there earlier this year. Calhoun, 412 against the Jays this season. A couple of home runs. He has three RBIs, seven hits overall. And he has handled lefties in his career in the minor leagues. Look at his numbers in the minor leagues. I'm going to show you that he's hit lefties. The appeal down to third, and Mike Everett says that he went around. That's the second out of the inning. So Calhoun strikes out. It only took three pitches. Totally went around on that one. Good visit to the mound by Pete Walker. Get Mark Burley straightened out. Unusual start for Mark Burley. He throws a strike to Grant Crean, but Burley before tonight had allowed just seven first inning runs in his first 29 starts. He's given up a three spot here tonight. Green quickly behind 0 2. Grant Green was acquired in a trade from Oakland July 30th. Blue Jays happened to be in Oakland at that time. The Angels gave up Alberto Callasco. Outside. Eric Ibar got it started. He did a solo home run with one out. And Trout walked, Trumbull doubled, Hamilton singled and drove one two. Green stays alive. That home run by Eric Ibar. The 3,000th hit that Mark Burley's given up in the big leagues. How about that? 3,000 hits he has given up. you got to be good to give up 3,000 hits. Got to be around. And then they keep putting you out there. One and two. Two outs. There's another drive into left. Davis is not going to get it. He knocks it down. Hamilton scores. They get it back into the infield. And Green drives it around. Little looper into center. 
told you that this team, the Angels, have been hitting the ball of late. In the month of September, their team batting average at 295, which ranks second in all of Major League Baseball. So they're starting to put it together. It looked like a breaking ball from Burley with a couple of strikes, and it's down. You can see Jay Pierre and Sebia look like that ball is going to bounce, but it hangs up in there. Knocked down by Davis for the fourth run. The ninth man to hit here in the first is the third baseman, Andrew Romine. Romine batting 244. Romine's 27 years old. He swings right through that pitch. It's not exactly what the Blue Jays had anticipated with Mark Burley. Chad Jenkins begins to loosen up. Off the end of the bat, Goins will go to first, and the inning comes to an end. But the Angels score four runs on five hits. The Blue Jays have dug themselves an early deep hole. over the last seven games. Now John Gibbons ball club going to have to slug their way back into it. Take a look at the lineup. Jose Reyes top of the order. Then Ryan Goins. Brett Lorry against the Angels this season has gone six for 15. Set a double a home run driven in a run. And then J.P. Aaron Simi, the catcher against Jerome Williams. The starter for the Angels is four for five with a double. He's driven in a pair. So a couple of those hitters are going to have to make a contribution and get to Jerome Williams making his 22nd start of the season. And 34th appearance on the season for the Angels. Now in his big eighth big league season. Third with the Angels. Earned a win his last time out. That was his first victory since June the 12th at Baltimore. Snapped a streak of 13 consecutive starts without earning a win for Williams. He's been around. He knows what he needs to do. This will be an opportunity for him to build on some momentum, and he's been staked to an early lead. He's up four to nothing. Jose Reyes steps in. You notice that Jerome Williams has a pink glove, and that's to honor the memory of his late mother who passed away from breast cancer. And he has worn that for a long time. Passed away in 2001, so I've only known him as a guy who wears the pink glove. Yeah. He grew up in Hawaii, actually, about 15 minutes from Pearl Harbor. He used to wear puka shells around him. When he first came up with the Giants, he had the puka shells around his neck. Three and one. Jerome Williams, now 31 years old. First round pick in 1999 of the Giants. Reyes taking all the way. This club's down by four. Angels won three of four the last time these two teams met. There's a look at Ryan Goins on deck. Bouncing ball up the middle. Big hop. Ibear unloads in a hurry and throws out Reyes. New look in the outfit for the Angels. No Mike Trout in the outfit. It's Hamilton, Cowgill, and Calhoun. Calhoun's got a terrific arm in right. 
On the infield, Andrew Romine and Eric Ibar. Left side of the diamond, Grant Green and Mark Trumbo. Trumbo making his 97 start at first, and Chris Ionetta behind the plate for Jerome Williams. And getting the start in center field. 17th time in the outfield is Calgill, and that's just because they got to get Trout off there. You usually would see him in center field, and I'm sure we'll see Mike Trout at some point jog out the center field in this series. Williams delivers a first pitch strike to Ryan Goins. Just off the plate. The veteran Tim Welke is the home plate umpire tonight. One's a little bit late on that fastball. Williams isn't what I would call a power pitcher by any means, but he's got a wide assortment of pitches, and he's always had confidence in his curveball. Pitch that he'll use any time. Well, his fastball, I think he's got to build off of that fastball. He's got to be able to put it in the strike zone. Nice grab by Trumbo. He throws a little bit behind Williams, but he's able to make the play. And, and I think if he does that, then he can use his other pitchers, especially that curveball. You're going to get the fastball just about 60% of the time. And batters are hitting 296 on the season, but lately much better. They really blasted that fastball in May, June, and July. July they hit 373 against it. Just the month of September, 154. So he's going to have to use that, put it where he needs to, to put it, to set up the curveball to change up in the cutter. And his curveball's good. You can see curveball just a 121 average against his curve. Brent Laurie. It's over for four against Jerome Williams. Laurie batting the third tonight. Edwin Encarnacion has been bothered by a sore left wrist, so he is out of the lineup again tonight. There's Edwin, and Edwin, of course, had another phenomenal season, but right now he's battling that wrist problem. On his show, 36 homers and 104 RBIs. No BP today, just treatment on that wrist. Saw him icing it earlier today. There's Jose Bautista, another player who is down and is probably out for the season. Right? They've already announced that. Colby Rasmus is back with the ball club. He took batting practice today. Lori fouls it up. Rasmus, dealing with that oblique muscle, was out swinging. Took quite a few swings today. He has not been activated yet, but he is back with the ball club and certainly anxious to get back into the action, I'm sure. It's a family affair. His brother's in town now with the Angels. Corey Rasmus, a relief pitcher for the Angels. 2-2. Two -two. Laurie fights it off. Well, this is one thing that we have seen from Laurie as you look at Rasmus down in the bullpen is that with two strikes, he's changed his whole personality. Now it's almost as if he is bound to determine to spoil anything close. He's not going to allow you to make a good pitch on him. He's going to protect that plate, fight it off, and hopefully put it in play. A little bit more relaxed with two strikes. And that comes with experience. One of the things, I was talking to Chad Matola today about that, why he is hitting much better with two strikes. He says he's staying back just a little bit more. In the olden days, and we'll call them the olden days, the last <laughs> couple of years because it's been around. He says he would jump at the ball with two strikes. Now he's a little bit more relaxed, and he's staying back. Bounces this ball over the mound. It's going to be a tough play for Ibar, but he makes it. Eric Ibar was deep at short. Had to come behind the mound and unload quickly, and he does. Good inning for Jerome Williams. Shortstop helping him out with the defense. Throws it in time to end the inning.
first inning. Scored four runs on five hits. See if Mark Burley can't turn things around and bounce back. This has popped up. Lynn giving chase over near the wall. Gets there and makes the catch. Good job by Adam Lynn. He got to that wall, leaned over those temporary seats and made the catch. I thought that ball was in the stands right there. So Adam, stay with it. He did, and he's going to be rewarded. Stay right with it. Just take it right away from the fans for the first out. That ball looked like it was drifting and drifting. Straighten out for Lynn to make the play. Got to love that if you're Mark Burley. 30. Absolutely. You never know what's going to happen, so just chase it until it's out of play. 35 pitches in the first inning yeah. for Burley, so anytime you can got, get an out, you got to get it. We have seen one thing from the home plate umpire. He's got a conservative strike zone. Tim Welke has been conservative for both pitchers. What Mark Burley has to do is just change his sights a little bit and move it in to the corners. And down just a little bit more. Just a fraction. He moved it over just enough to catch that corner. Is he that good to do that? I think he is. Yeah. He's 34 years old now. Came through the White Sox system. Got to the big leagues in 2000. There's Lind at first. He's going to make the first two outs of this inning. Mike Trout first on the scene last year. He was the unanimous Rookie of the Year award winner. Everybody said, well, wait till this year. He'll have that sophomore slump. Uh-uh. Have a look. Much better numbers this year than last year. A 338 average, which is better on baseball percentage, slugging percentage, his OPS up. Everything is up. And you know what I find amazing? Last year, it was Miguel Cabrera and Mike Trout won two in the MVP award. They both had the best season. We weren't sure who was going to be the MVP. And both of those players have improved on their seasons from last year. Yes. Both of them. Remarkable. It's really remarkable given the fact that everybody now is aware of Mike Trout. Of course, everybody knew Miguel Cabrera and they knew what he was all about. But Mike Trout last year, I mean, he gained respect right away. But look at the numbers he's put up again this year. I just didn't think either one of those players could top what they did last year. Mike Trout's hit 378 since the All-Star break. That leads the majors. And that's what the measure of a good ball player is, how they finish a season. You know, guys can get off to a great start, play a couple of good months, and then kind of sit back and rest on their laurels. This guy's not in it no. about resting. Get after it and just keep hitting and stay hot. We played them four games in Los Angeles. I think he was on base ten times in those four games. So he can knock it out of the ballpark, and he took Mark Burley deep when we were out there. And he's got a good eye, so he can work a walk, and with his great speed, he's going to be in scoring position. What a threat. He gets called out. Good bounce back inning for Mark Burley. Trout's not sure of it, but the Angels go down in order in the second. When we come back, Adam Lynn had a good road trip. Three homers on the trip. Rajay Davis and then J.P. Aaron Sebia, four for five against Jerome Williams.
pregame series against the Angels. Mike Sosha's ball club played Minnesota last night in the makeup game, and they lost. And they are here now, three games set. Long road trip for the Angels. They'll go from here to Houston to Oakland. Tough road trip late in the season. Adam Lynn takes it outside. It's a ball on the strike. That's crazy. Ten games this late in the season. That's tough for a team. It's their second ten game road trip back to back. They didn't have any at the first part of the season and then two in a row for this team. Mike Sosha has certainly had a disappointing season. This ball club was expected to do well. This ball is going to bounce in front of Josh Hamilton. Lead off single for Lynn. on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. And by the 2014 Honda Odyssey. The world's first minivan with a built-in vacuum. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Rajay Davis with Lind at first. He takes his strength. Rajay on the road trip, six for 20. A couple of home runs and drove in five. Another looping line drive. This one's going to hang up for Hamilton. Davis is retired. And now they force him as Hamilton was called for no catch. And they force the runner out, Lynn. And you can see the umpire second, Hal Gibson. Mike Everett, the third base umpire, signaled no catch. And now Williams is getting an explanation from the second base umpire. Mike Sosha has come out to talk to you. Third base umpire. You know, the, Mike Everett. The only reason Mike Sosha is arguing this, and now the umpires are going to get together, they exchanged the run. You got Rajay Davis now at first. This is what the third base umpire saw. He caught it and in the exchange, he dropped it. And you have to clearly take the ball out to be able to throw it back into the infield. Yeah, I think that's the catch. And yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they reversed this. Watch, I caught it. Yeah, they're calling him out. And Mike Sosha got exactly what he wanted. He got Rajay Davis off the bases. Lynn's going to go back because Davis is called out on the fly ball. And so she didn't want that to go by. Yeah. Hamilton knew it was an out. Yeah. That was a catch. It, you, the rule states you have to take the ball out of your glove. If, if they're, I've seen a guy die for a ball, and then in the transfer, try to, he drops it, and that's a no catch. That was a catch, and they just dropped it. Yeah. And they talk about the phrase voluntary release. And he obviously catches it. And then in the exchange just didn't grab it. So that's been called like that all summer long. We've seen that many times. But here's the umpire, Mike Everett. And he didn't see. All he could see was the back of Hamilton. So he couldn't see his hands go into his glove. Remember the play against Daniel Nava and the Boston Red Sox earlier this year? I think that was in Detroit. Same kind of thing, and the umpires let it stand. They, they called it a no catch. It cost the Red Sox a yeah. ball game. So J.P. Aaron C.B. bats a ball on a strike. Lind at first. About the end of the bat, that's going to fall for a base hit. Lind will stop at second. Fans, if you want your baseball questions answered by our team of experts, email asktheexperts at sportsnet.ca and keep your eye out for the home hardware Ask the Experts segment later on in the game. So Blue Jays trying to get something going against Jerome Williams here in their half of the second. Moises Sierra. He's done a nice job. He's got six doubles and a home run since... Joining the Jays. Boy, he's got some tremendous power. 
Uh, he's a very interesting guy, I think, if you're the Blue Jays. When you look at him play the game of baseball and, and, and you, you see the things that he can do on a, on a field, he's an everyday major league player. He, is, he can run. He can throw. Decent fielder. He takes bad routes at times. And I think he's got to iron that out. He's got some power. He can hit the ball the other way a little bit. But talent-wise, the talent that he possesses, that's a major league player. Up the middle. Gloved by Green. He misses Ibar at second. Should be an infield hit for Sierra. Grant Green made a nice stab of the play. But running away from second, he tried to throw back over his shoulder. And it will be an infield hit. He might have been better off just to stop and just get one out. It looked like he was trying to make a double play here. Stop, plant, jump, whatever, just to make a, a more accurate throw to the shortstop. That is really hard for a second baseman to run like that, backhand the ball, flip it underhand like that. You're going to get some tail on that ball. And it runs away from Ibar. All hands are safe. Just like that, Blue Jays, bases loaded and just one out. And Mike Butcher, the pitching coach, is out to kind of calm things down here. There have been some weird things happen, including Rajay Davis being ruled safe. Lynn called out on a force out, and then that was turned over, and they put Lynn back on the bases. While we have a second here, while Butcher's talking to him, that play by Josh Hamilton, now I don't know all the rules, maybe you do, is that a reviewable play next year in instant replay? I believe it would be. Wow. Yeah. That, that, and it'd be easily reviewed, no problem at all, but I think that's one that will come under that review. Yeah, that's crazy. The bases are loaded. Lynn singled to start the inning. Aaron Seabee had a one-out single to center, and Moises Sierra's at first, he had an infield hit. Anthony Ghost. Blue Jays can get right back into this ball game. They trail four to nothing. High and deep to right, Anthony goes grand slam. This young man has some talent. He has been working extremely hard with Chad Matola to iron out this swing. Take away that leg kick slowly but surely. It's starting to take away, shorten up that swing, and you're going to get results like this. That ball is juiced by Ghost right off the back wall in right field. And with one swing, we are all tied. Back to square one. Third Grand Slam for the Blue Jays. Ghost and Edwin Encarnacion, who has two. The only Blue Jays to hit Grand Slam home runs. Kevin Pilar hits it into the air, center field. Calgill is there. Pilar is retired. Two down. Anthony Ghost, boy, this is a beautiful swing. You can see the leg kick has been almost taken away. Again, slowly but surely, they want to take that away, spread them out just a little bit more. Think about hitting line drives. Use that great speed. And, and they're finding that the, the lower half and the upper half of his swing are starting to come together, producing more line drives and more solid hits. And there's always that factor of speed with Anthony Ghost. He was talking about his adjustments in the pregame batting practice. He said, yeah, I feel pretty good. I need some hits now. He needs to chop that one up. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get you going. Back to the top of the order. Reyes ran it out shortstop his first time up. Two and one. Boy, how about just back to square one. Burley gave up a four spot. Angels send nine men to the plate in the first inning, and Burley's back in a brand new ball game because of Anthony Ghost's grand slam. This ball is hit hard to center field. Cowgill has got room. He breaks it down, makes the catch. The inning is over. But the Blue Jays on four hits, including Anthony Ghost's first career grand slam, have tied it up. It's a 4 4 game.
2014 Honda Odyssey, the world's first minivan with a built-in vacuum. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Mark Burling, back in the ball game. It's a 4-4 game. Mark Trumbo. Trumbo doubled his first time up. Pops this one into the seats down the right side. You know what I say after these first two innings tonight? Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> these, I think you're right. Yeah, these two teams, we talked about it in the first inning, how similar they are. Tied again. Trumbo is in a swing mode right now. He's got 31 home runs, as we mentioned. It is 30th home run on Friday to become the first Angel with consecutive 30 home run seasons since Vladdy Guerrero did it 2004 through 2006. That's a fair ball. Just inside the bag. That's going to bang off the wall. Rajay Davis over to play it in quickly and bobbled it. He had a shot at him. He played it perfectly, but went into his glove and couldn't find the handle. So Trumbull ends up at second with his second double. Yeah, he definitely had a shot at picking up that fourth outfield assist. It's hit hard by Trumbull right over the bag down the line left field. Rajay plays a very good left field here at Rogers Center right over the bag and it hits on that short wall. Ricochets right to him. He's got him, but he just can't come up with the ball cleanly. And Trumbo's standing at second. So Burley's got to work around the leadoff double. Josh Hamilton drove in to his first time up. He's got another base hit that's going to get into the outfield, and Ghost is coming home. Here's the throw to the plate. It's over Aaron Sebia's head. Burley backs it up, and Trumbo scores easily. So Hamilton will pick up another RBI. He's got three already tonight. Hamilton will go to second on the air by Anthony Ghost. And another bad throw by a Blue Jays outfielder. Another one that's not even close. Slider, cutter, down and away. And with the overshift into center field, Ghost thinks he has a shot. Overthrows the cutoff man, J.P. Aaron CV, and Mark Burley, who is going back to, to back up. And that takes the double play out. Early in the ball game, you've got to keep that double play in order. This ball is hit high into center field. Hamilton going back to the bag. He's going to stay put at second. One now. Plan, it's time for our Blackberry sneak peek stat of the game. Brought to you by the new Blackberry's head 10 and Q10. Bill, to keep you moving. Well, this has been a, a crazy game for Mark Burley because he has been so good in the second half. Starters ERA, second best in the American League. Only Anibal Sanchez. Detroit is better at 217. Yvonne Nova has been outstanding, but Mark Burley right there at 221. So this is a little bit uncharacteristic of Mark Burley so far in the second half of the season. Cole Calhoun struck out his first time up. Bounces this ball towards short. Going to be a big hop for Reyes. In time, Calhoun is retired. Two down. Well, you're right about that. It's going to be one of those nights where you just better strap yourself in. Yep. A lot of the 25 30 runs scored here tonight, the way it's gone. Angels have a 5 4 lead already. Nine runs on 11 hits combined. And we're in the top of the third. Grant Green, second baseman. He goes after the first pitch. Big hop for Lori. The inning is over, but the Angels tack on a run. They've taken a 5 4 lead as we head to the bottom of the third.
are some lucky fans enjoying the seat upgrade courtesy of TD. Congratulations and welcome to the ball game. And so far, you've seen a lot of offense. While over in the Jays Care Community Center are some folks from McMaster Athletes Care. Welcome to you as well. Beautiful night for a ball game. 34 degrees at the start of this game. Roof is wide open on a beautiful Tuesday evening here at Rogers Center. Hot tonight, so the ball is going to be jumping out of here. We've already seen a couple of home runs tonight. Anthony Ghost and Eric Ibar have gone deep. Not the usual characters by any means. Yeah, I wouldn't think Ibar a big home run hitter. Ghost hit his first of the season. Ibar hit his sixth. Brian Goins grounded out to first. His first time up. Goins made an impression on the former Blue Jay Alfredo Griffin, first base coach. Watched him during infield practice and said, I recognized right away that he had good hands. I wasn't sure who he was. But he said, boy, he looks good in the field. Alfredo, of course, a great shortstop. And later on in his career, he played second base as well. Snared by Williams. He will throw to first for the up. One down. Save during the plumbing, heating, and electrical expert sale only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Beautiful shot of downtown Toronto. See in tower high above Rogers Center. It's a 5-4 angel lead. Brett Lorry. Round it out to short. Laurie made some great adjustments in the series at Minnesota. We saw him have a terrific bat against Mike Pelfrey. Yeah, Mike uh, against Pelfrey threw him a sinker that was down and in, and Brett swung right over the top of it. Missed it by, you know, four or five inches, which is a lot. He came right back with the same pitch against Laurie, and Brett stayed with it that time, stayed back just a little bit more, and used his hands and singled into center field. Beautiful swing right there. Another two strike hit. He forces Calhoun all the way to the wall. Here's the throw to second. Not in time. Good hustle by Brett Lorry. Ends up at second. An 0 2 pitch. He stroked down the right field line for a double. And that at bat we were just talking about, Chad Matola told Brett Lorry that it was the best at bat that he has ever seen from Lorry. He's been around him for about three years. This is what I'm talking about. That that hit right there with a couple of strikes. Watch where the pitch is. Watch how he doesn't move. He just uses his hands. You don't need a full swing when a pitch is just like that. Use your hands, stay on top of that ball, and drive it to right field for extra bases. You certainly don't need a full swing when you're as strong as Brett Lord. And I think he's learning that to trust his hands. Adam Lynn singled and scored in the second. You're making the adjustments. You're seeing Brett Lorry be able to handle those pitches. Three months ago, he rolls over that pitch or he pops it up or he swings right through it. Now he just uses his hands. He stays back. He just punches the ball where it's pitched. And he gets himself a base hit. Hot shot gloved by Trumbo. He'll wait on Williams and he steps on the bag. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. A lot going on in baseball. Ivan Nova is the starter for the Yankees, and Pat, you mentioned how well Nova is pitching since the All-Star break. He's off to a good start again tonight. Just one hit through the first three innings with a couple of strikeouts. Curveball. His curveball's back, and he's throwing it for strikes. That's been the difference for Nova. I think the manager shook hands tonight when they traded the lineup card. I bet you they sent their bench coach out there <laughs> <laughs> or somebody else to deliver the lineup card. If you had not heard... Buck Showalter and Joe Girardi got into it behind home plate, middle of the game last night. Buck Showalter took exception to what Girardi was doing, and they got into a screaming match. That's off the end of the bat. That's going to drive Calgill to center. Deep to center for the out, but the inning is over quietly. A one out double is left on the bases.
Toronto Blue Jays DeMarlo Hale and DeMarlo you and I were talking about the young players and how talented they are Anthony goes hits a grand slam but in the field he made a bad decision on that throw to the plate tell us about living with young players and their inexperience well they, they, they're definitely exciting and um, you know their talent is showing out on the field but it's also slowing the game down uh, and, and, and playing situational defense and that was a perfect example uh, he got a little excited thought he'd make a play at home play with a long throw and threw it over to catch ahead allowing a base runner to move up 90 feet DeMarlo mm -hmm. uh, Mark Burrell has been outstanding over the last couple of months what happened in the first inning there you know what I thought he made some pretty good pitches I think uh, I bar uh, hit the home run I thought it was a pretty good pitch and you know, you got some good hitters coming in the middle of the order there with Trumbo and Trout, and uh, I thought some of his balls that he pitched was missed away. So he's got to get back back in the groove. It's one of these kind of games where, you know, we had um, the big four run in and to match theirs, and now we just got to put up some zeros. Could be back and forth all night, D. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Thank you. That's DeMarlo Hale, the bench coach of the Blue Jays, and we are pleased to have him join us from the dugout tonight. Andrew Roman, a third baseman, takes one downstairs. It's two and one. Well, I'm just glad that the Blue Jays hit last tonight. <laughs> if it's going to be one of those back and forth things. Mark Burley had a one, two, three inning in the second. This ball is shot down the right side. Long run for Sierra. That's going to get down. Sierra plays it. Up against the wall, gets it back in, and Andrew Romine has a leadoff double. Back to back innings with a leadoff double. It was Trumbo last mm -hmm. inning, and here you're going to see Romine. He ends up at second, hits a pretty good pitch, goes the other way. You know what I think Mark Burley's going to have to do is pitch inside just a little bit more to the right handed hitter. It looks like the home plate umpire's strike zone when the ball is just off the plate he's calling it a ball but he's a little bit more generous on the inside and we have now seen the right handed hitters handle that ball away ball is popped in the air Laurie is going to make the catch coming Calgary well he does the Blue Jays a favor right there the art of money seems to be totally lost no matter where you go get a strike that's the first thing you have to do if you are buddy make sure that that pitcher throws it in there Burley did the right thing he saw him square around quickly, threw the ball right at the top of the strike zone. He offered at it, and you pop it up. It's a pitch that you're likely to pop up. Isn't that interesting? That's always the reaction, too, because the hitter sees it coming at him, and they kind of jab at it, almost in an effort to protect themselves. And more often than not, they'll pop it up. Eric Ibar homered in his first at bat. Really misses away. Ibar then grounded out to the first baseman. So he's one for two. It looks like the right handed batters are making a conscious effort of looking for the ball away from Mark Burley here in the first couple of innings. And he's missing his spots, or if he's close, he's not getting the call. I think what he needs to do is pitch inside a little bit more, cut that ball in on those hands, and then that'll open up the outside part of the plate for him. If you do that, throw the ball inside, then that pitch that you throw away will look further away than it actually is. Because you're having the hitter look at both sides of the plate. Two and one. We're in the fourth inning, and it has been fast and furious early on. The Angels scored four runs on five hits in the first. The Blue Jays scored four runs on four hits in the second, including a grand slam off the bat of Anthony Ghost. They've been swinging it. They've been averaging, along with that 295 average second in the major leagues, they've also averaged five runs a game this month. Ibar <laughs> didn't like it. He's going to talk to Tim Wilkie about it. So it's two balls and two strikes. Yeah. 
Another ball hit hard to left, but Rajay Davis is there. He makes the catch. Two down. Now the Angels for the season 32 and 36, but their last 11 road games are much better. Nine and two record with a good ERA, 241. Average just under 270, and their run differential is plus 21. The last 11 games on the road, they've played well. And they're hitting over 300 as a team with runners in scoring position. That makes everybody look good. When your team hits with runners in scoring position, outscoring the opponents by 21 runs, that's with no Howie Kendrick, no Albert Pujols. Howie Kendrick is back with the ball club. He had a sprained knee. He was out on the disabled list. He is here with his series. In fact, took BP and took ground balls, and I'm sure they're going to be very conservative with him to play on this artificial surface. Interesting road trip for the Angels. Minnesota, Toronto, Houston, Oakland. It's like, I don't think I should sign up with that travel agent to book that trip. <laughs> I think uh, their last trip I, th I think it's 5,800 miles. Talking to Mark Gubazov today, and their last trip was 6,400 combined miles on their last road trip. Well, that's the price you pay for living in Southern California. There you go. Every place is a long way away. Mike Sosha has been there for a long time. 14th season as the Angel manager. He's 54 years old. Longest tenured manager in the big leagues. He began with the Angels in 2000. He was the bench coach for two years with the Dodgers, 97 and 98, under Bill Russell. Of course, he played with the Dodgers, and everybody thought that they'd keep him right there, and he'd eventually be the manager of the Dodgers. But the Angels swooped in and stole him. Crowd drives this ball to right. Sierra's got room. Just onto the warning track. The inning is over. The Angels get a leadoff double off barely, but he strands him at second. Still a one-run game. Ghost has hit a grand slam of home run tonight. He'll bat this inning. As the Ghost tied the game up with a grand slam, the Angels have since taken the lead 5-4. It'll be Aaron Sebia, Sierra, and Ghost in the bottom of the fourth. J.P. Aaron Sebia had a little single into center field his first time up. He scored on the grand slam. He's loving Jerome Williams, isn't he? What is he now, five for six? Five for six. That's pretty good.
bottom of the fourth inning. Angels lead it five to four off the end of the map. Ibar had short weights back. In time, one down. So Moises Sierra, the right fielder, will step in. Sierra had an infield hit in the second inning. Hit a ball back over the mound. Grant Green, the second baseman, tried to make the force out at second through wide of Ibar. So Sierra was credited with an infield hit that loaded the bases and set up Anthony Ghost. This ball is hit to right. Calhoun backs up right on the edge of the warning track. Two down. Sierra's retired. Well, you're going to get a lot of strikes from Jerome Williams, and he's going to throw a lot of fastballs, so be ready. He just missed that one. So Williams retires the first two quickly here in the fourth. Anthony Ghost hit a first pitch. Grand slam a home run his last time up. So you know what I would do now if I was Anthony Ghost? Lay down a bunt. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> he bunts the next pitch and beats it to first. Anthony Ghost, two for two. Great call, Teddy. Well, you got to show him what you can do. You can hit the ball out of the ballpark like you did his first time up. Now show him that you can drop a bunt down and use your speed. There's two outs. There's nobody on. You got to start something. Why not use your legs? And he does it with a bunt. He's safe at first base. With that great speed, the power and the speed. There you go. Williams flipped it with his glove. Trumbo late getting to the bag, and Ghost was already past first. Two out bunt single. Ghost at first with a big lead, and Williams chases him back. Anthony Ghost's first big league hit. Last July at Yankee Stadium was a bunt off Clay Rapata. He had entered the ball game as a pinch hitter for Ben Francisco and was retired his first at bat. He got a hit in his second at bat. Ghost has three steals and four attempts in the big leagues. And you know he's excited to go. And I think Mike Sosha knows that. And that's why you're going to see the step off. Now we've seen the throw over. We might see the pitch out at some point. DeMarlo Hale. In reference to Ghost, that sometimes you got to slow the game down. But you're right. So many of these youngsters think that they can do anything at any time. Wait a pitch. Why not wait a pitch? Everybody in the ballpark knows your goal. Ghost had 250 stolen bases in 617 minor league games. He's had two seasons of 70 or more as a minor leaguer. Not going slide step and Williams missed badly inside. Kevin Pilar's the batter. He flied out to left field. Anthony goes last year got in 56 games with the Blue Jays at 223. He was 15 for 18. In steals a year ago in what, the big leagues. What a great lead at first base, also. Wow, that's a, an aggressive lead. That's what you you like to see with young guys. The aggressiveness. Get out there. Another step on the artificial surface. Not going. Pilar shortens to show bunt, takes a strike. Kevin Pilar is a savvy ball player. He knows he's got to give Ghost a chance to run, so he takes a strike with two outs. You want that guy in scoring position, so he might even take another one just to give Anthony a chance to run. I think you should be swinging until you see him take off. Then you can go ahead and take a pitch. He is swinging and fouls it into the seats. I don't think as a hitter you can do it the other way around. I, I don't think you can go up there and say, okay, I'm going to take a pitch and let the guy steal, and all of a sudden he doesn't go, and then you have to swing. It's got to be the other way around. You've got to be in swing mode first. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Anthony goes with a bunch single. He's two for two.
There he goes. Cut on and missed. It's in the dirt. Ionetta will throw to first to end the inning. Pilar strikes out. So we'll go to the fifth. The Angels have a 5-4 lead. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. Enjoy in game video highlights. The app is available on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Android, and Blackberries at 10. Season long subscription packages are available. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. And that 13 is the official app of Major League Baseball. Blue Jay fans have been out all season long to support their ball club, and we have seen them on the road. We've seen them here at this ballpark. They've done a good job of turning out. Mark Trumbo. Trumbo grew up in the shadows of Anaheim Stadium. High and deep to left. Rajay Davis looking up at the warning track at the wall. Home run. Trumbo, his 32nd home run. He's three for three against Mark Burley tonight. Three extra base hits for Mark Trumbo. And that one just shows you the strength. How strong he is. I didn't think he got that one. That is just a fly ball, but a guy with that type of power, that type of bat speed, the ball just keeps going and going. Trumbo, short swing. You can see it's on the inner half and it's up. It's a high fly ball that just keeps carrying. 32 on the season now for Trumbo. 90 RBIs for the first baseman. There's a deep drive to right. Josh Hamilton has put a charge in it. Back to back home runs for the Angels. Hamilton, his 20th of the season, he has three hits against Burley. Boy, that has been danger zone for the Blue Jays starter tonight. The four and five hitter. Three extra base hits for Trumbo, a couple of singles, and then this home run by Hamilton. The only question was, was it fair or was it foul? Plenty of distance down the right field line, and it hits right in the middle of that foul pole. There's another drive, and this is off the bat of Ionetta. The base of the wall in center. Ionetta will end up at second base. And Burley has been tagged hard here in the start of the fifth. You know, last time that he has given up multiple home runs in a game at Los Angeles versus the Angels. And again tonight, giving up three now to the Angels. So Pete Walker will come out, and it's a two-fold visit to the mound to give Burley a little bit of a breather and also give Chad Jenkins a little more time down in the bullpen. Jenkins has thrown earlier in this game. He's up for a second time.
So the big bats of the Angels have come alive here. Seven runs on 11 hits so far in this game. Where they're putting together some extra base hits tonight, aren't they? Trumbo has two doubles and a home run. Romine has a double. Ionetta has a double. Ibar, Hamilton, and Trumbull have all homered. There's another ball hit hard. This one's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. And skips over the wall for a ground rule double. Cole Calhoun drives in Chris Ionetta. It's an 8 4 Angel lead. John yep. Gibbons wants Aaron Seavey to go out and buy some more time for Jenkins, and that's probably going to be it for Mark Burley. Calhoun hit 446 versus left handed pitching in the minor leagues this year. This ball is up. And the fourth consecutive ball that is hit hard this inning to start the fifth by the Angels is going to spell the end of Mark Burley's night. 12 home runs, or excuse me, 12 hits allowed by Mark Burley, the most he's given up this season. So that string of consecutive strong starts by Burley will come to an end here at the hands of the Angels. He'll turn things over to the bullpen. He leaves. The Angels have an 8-4 lead. Chad Jenkins on when we come back to face Grant Green. On Sportsnet, one Thursday night football. The New York Jets win their first game against the New England Patriots. Geno Smith, the rookie, quarterbacking the Jets against the veteran Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Thursday, it all begins at 8 p.m. Eastern time in Pacific Sportsnet. One NFL football Thursday night. Plenty of reinforcements down in that bullpen now for the Blue Jays with all the September call-ups. Chad Jenkins now into the ball game for the sixth time this year. He's done a nice job coming out of the bullpen for the Blue Jays, giving them innings, sinker, slider, a little bit of a change up. He'll throw strikes. Last time worked a week ago Sunday. Grant Green, the second baseman, takes the first pitch strike. Still nobody out. Angels have scored three runs here in the top of the fifth and have yet to make it out. Cole Calhoun is at second. He had a ground rule double. Bouncing ball. Laurie looks the runner back and takes too much time. Grant Green hustling out of the box and Laurie looked the runner back at second. Cole Calhoun and by the time he turned around Green was past the bag at first. Green can run. He's a middle infielder so you got to figure that he can get down that line. Really no need to to look at the runner at second base. He's not going anywhere. He might have faked. And it looked like Brent did on that just a little bit. He looked and then he hesitated one more time and Green beats it out. It's a fielder's choice for Green. First and second still. Nobody out. 
Romine shows bunt and pulls the bat back. Watch Brett right here. He looks, and then he looks again. And by that time, it's too late. He knows it. Just get the out. Your infielders will tell you if the runner is going or not. They'll say first, first, first. They'll, they'll let you know. So really, there's no need to look at the runner at second. Romine bunts it out in front of home. Aaron Sebia goes to first. The Angels move the runners up. They have a four-run lead. Mike Sosha wants the number nine batter to bunt, and he delivers perfectly. Stay still way too early in the ball game to give yourself. you got to play for more runs. The way the Blue Jays have been able to score runs, how evenly matched these two teams are. Got to play for more runs, so the infield has to come in. It's an 8 4 ball game. Colin Calgill inside. Cole Calhoun at third base, Grant Green at second. Calhoun is Burley's responsibility. Off speed pitch in there. It's a ball and a strike. Chad Jenkins is a former number one pick of the Blue Jays. He has dealt with injury problems this season. And a back muscle that he pulled and had to let heal. He got up to the big leagues last year, a total of 13 games. He made three starts, went one and three with a 450 ERA. Pitched a total of 32 innings a year ago. And then had some injuries, like you said, pitched in double A this season. Coming out of the bullpen here in September as a long man. Big strikeout for Jenkins. Just poured that fastball right by him. Save during the plumbing, heating, and electrical expert sale only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. We're in the top of the fifth. The Angels have scored three this inning. Eric Ibar batting left-handed. Goes after the first pitch and it's a fly ball to left. Davis backs up. The inning is over. Nice job by Chad Jenkins coming in and stranding the two base runners he inherited. The St. Louis Cardinals, the Milwaukee Brewers, and the Philadelphia Phillies in interleague play. Blue Jays travel to Cincinnati, home of the Tablers. Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, and Philadelphia. Visit BlueJays.com for the complete 2014 schedule. 
And if you get to Cincinnati in plenty of time, Pat's having a party, so make sure you let us know. Everyone's invited. <laughs> <laughs> You're all invited. Come on over. Come on over. Hey, here's another road trip for you. Montreal. Montreal. The Mets and the Blue Jays will play two games Friday, March 28th, and Saturday, March 29th at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Wrap up spring training. How about that? So baseball returns to Montreal next spring. Well, I hope we're doing those games on television because I'd love to go back to Montreal. I haven't been in that stadium since, I believe, 1991. Yeah, it uh, certainly has a rich history of baseball with those great Expos teams. 94 was probably the heartbreaker. Yeah. Expos were playing so well. They had arguably the best team in baseball. And the strike hit, and we never knew how this season would end up. Reyes drives this ball to right. Calhoun got a good jump, and he makes the catch. One down. That'll bring to the plate the second baseman, Ryan Goins, and he put on a show Sunday in the field. Boy, he certainly did. He takes a great angle for this ball, and in one motion, catches it, slides, and throws him out, and then this is a heads-up play right here. He comes home, and I love his thinking on this play right here. He said he was a step in front of double play depth and told himself, if I get a hot shot right at me, I'm going home. So that pre-pitch preparation paid off perfectly for Ryan Goins. Yeah, the only way you make that play is if you play it through your mind before it even happens, before the pitch is even thrown. Okay, what am I going to do if the ball's hit to me? He did that. Got a big out. He's a good-looking player. He's anxious to play winter ball, but so far hasn't been able to secure a spot. And I think that'd be a great step for him, certainly, to get a taste of the big leagues for the first time and just continue that momentum right into the winter league. I think that'd be great. Hit hard, but gloved by Ibar. He's retired. Goins on a nice play. Went to his left, and you could see Jerome Williams said, Sorry, man, didn't mean to let him hit it that hard. <laughs> Well, you got to have plate coverage. You got to be able to hit the ball all over the place. And Ryan Goins hits this one, but it's right at shortstop. He's standing right there. Ibar's going to make that play every single day. Ibar is a good shortstop. He's now 29 years old from the Dominican Republic. Lori, what a swing. Breaking ball, stayed right back and strokes it into center. He's two for three so far. Staying back. That was the whole key to that at bat right there. Stay back. He hit a fastball last time for a double down the right field line. So Jerome Williams says, I got to break, throw him a breaking ball first pitch. And Brent Lowry with that head down, use your hands. Watch how he stays back. Hardly any movement. Lashes at the center field. No stride whatsoever. You eliminate the movement. Of course, that's going to eliminate your head moving, which in Turn eliminates your eyes moving, and that baseball looks like a beach ball up there. Adam Lind is one for two. This ball game's a long way from being over. You just get a sense the Blue Jays are going to put up another rally here soon. They trail by four. Blue Jays have won ten of their last thirteen games. Of course, September can be a minefield. If you put too much stock in what you see in September, you could make some mistakes of judgment as you're trying to evaluate your club and move forward into the next season. I think it'll be interesting for the Blue Jays after this series right here with the, the Angels because they play all pennant contenders, and they're going to get the A games from every one of those, those teams. They're going to throw their best pitchers. They're going to throw their play their best players. They're going to go out there and try and get and win a pennant. Pennant. So Blue Jays have got to play their best. It'll be a great measuring stick, I think, for some of the young players here. You're going to see an intensity level many of them haven't seen in the past. The American League is tightening up. 
Boston has a seven and a half game lead in the division race. But then the wild card race gets really interesting. Texas Tampa Bay have the first two wild card spots. They have a game and a half lead over Baltimore and Cleveland and a three game lead over New York. Off the end of the bat popped up foul ground Trumbo is there and Grant Green calls him off second baseman made the play. So we will go to the sixth. Now it's time for the home hardware cleanup crew brought to you by Natura. Home hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products. DH tonight, and he has had a phenomenal run this season. Franchise history, this is the number of times reaching base. Darren Hirstead has the record, 2,000. He reached base 305 times. Sean Fagan and Mike Trout this season. He has reached base 278 times, and you get on base, you're going to make a lot of things happen. He has the ability to steal bases. Of course, he can run like a deer. He has scored a run tonight. He now has scored 98 runs for the season, just two shy of becoming the third angel with 100 runs scored in back to back season. He's projected to reach base 313 times, which would blow away the franchise record. And, and what separates him from the other guys at the top of that lineup is his power and production. Yeah, it's great to get on base, your leadoff hitter, but this guy gets on base and does some damage. With the bat too. Yeah. I mean, there's a the thing of how do you keep score in baseball? Well, you keep score by how many times you cross home plate. Trout does that, and he also drives in runs. Yeah, he I mean, produces that's the greatest combination. He produces runs. If he scores 100 runs, which he will do this year, he'll be the seventh player in Major League history with 100 runs scored in his age 20 and 21 seasons. And he takes that pitch away and gets his first hit of the night. Lead off single here in the sixth. Make that 279. <laughs> now he walked in the first inning and now he singles leading off the sixth inning. Stays inside that ball. See how he stayed behind it, stayed inside it, and hit a, a rocket in the right field. To give you an idea of the company that Mike Trout keeps, when he scores his 100th run this season, he will join John McGraw, Mel Ott. Buddy Lewis, Ted Williams, Veda Pinson, and Alex Rodriguez. Pretty elite wow. company. And this guy is no slouch. Mark Trumbo, three for three. Pair of doubles and a solo home run, and Trumbo's 27 years old. This has been the danger zone tonight for the Blue Jays, hasn't it? Trumbo, Hamilton, Trout. Josh Hamilton on deck. He's three for three. He's driven in four runs.
We saw the Angels use the sacrifice bunt last inning. I don't think they're ready to call off the dogs and stop running here. Trout's a threat to steal. He's got 32 bags. Another hard hit ball by Trumbull, and that's going to split the outfit as it go all the way to the wall. Mike Trout's being waved around third. Reyes will not have a play as Trout scores for a second time. He's got 99 runs scored for the season. And another extra base hit for Mark Trumbo. That's four of them. It's only the sixth inning. Three doubles and a home run. John Gibbons can only look on as the Angels are now pouring it on. Sinker. That stays up and over the middle to play a good hitter and a hot hitter is going to hit that one every time. Trumbo mashes his ball. Different sound to the crack of the bat when Trumbull hits it, and there's a great depiction of trout speed. Goes all the way from first. Trumbull, three doubles tonight. First time he's had more than a double in a game this season. He has. Driven in a pair. Josh Hamilton has three hits. He's driven in four and got a chance for another. The Angels over the last 36 games are they've won 26 of them when this guy knocks in a run. The key to the, the batting order. He has been red hot. He is 37 for his last 107 at bats. Outside. Josh Hamilton's season high for RBIs is five. He's had one five RBI game that came against the Cubs in Chicago on the 10th of July. Hits it right to the second baseman. Bowens held his ground, played it perfectly. One down. Let's check it with Jamie Campbell. Chris Davis is two for two, including that home run. Davis has. 126 RBIs. What a season he has put together. Infield is drawn in for Chris Ionetta. Ionetta, he's got a single and a double. The Angels have nine runs on 14 hits. Upstairs. Mark Trumbo's at third. He has four extra base hits tonight already, and we're just in the sixth. That ties a franchise record. It's been done now. Ten times. That's an impressive feat right there. You're not getting any chinkers. You're hitting a lot of line drives. Eric Ibar was the last Oriole to have four extra base hits September 2011. They've had some great hitters. And he's going to have one, maybe two chances to break that record of extra base hits in a game by an angel. That's a season high for the angels. The previous high was three. Mark Trout, Mike Trout had three extra base hits against Seattle in May. There's a high deep drive to left field. Rajay Davis just watches as this one is out of here. Chris Ionetta with a two run a home run the fourth home run the angels have hit tonight. That might have been the highest 
home run that I've ever seen hit in this ballpark. He got underneath that one and skied it to left field. And it just carried right out of here. Another three-run inning by the Angels. Watch how high this ball is by Ionetta. Rajay Davis has plenty of time to get over there and then says, okay, I got a shot. No, I don't. It's out of here. Another extra base hit. 11 runs on 15 hits. <laughs> look how high that, look and see how high he was looking up. Like he popped it up. Popped it up over the 328 mark. This is loop down the left side, slicing into foul ground, and will bounce out of play. Ricky Romero is loosening up for the Blue Jays. It'd be a great opportunity for him to work in this game. He's not pitched with the Blue Jays since he made those two starts in May. The Angels have 15 hits. We're in the top of the sixth. Their season high for hits in a game is 20. That came against the Mariners at home on June 17th. I told you that this team came in here hot offensively. And they are staying hot. Another fly ball. This one playable for Davis. He makes the catch. Calhoun is retired. That's the second out of the. Inning. Save during the plumbing, heating, and electrical expert sale only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Night has fallen on Toronto, and the Angels have jumped all over the Blue Jays. They lead it 11 to 4 as they bat in the top of the six. Grant Green, the second baseman. Green has gone one for three with an RBI single. Green grew up in Anaheim Hills, not far from Angels Stadium. He went to college at USC, Southern California, and then he was drafted number one in 2009 by Oakland. Very high draft pick. Gave up on him this year, sent him to the Angels for Cayespo. Bouncing ball, Goins near second. In time, nice play by the second baseman. That ends the inning, but the Angels get three more, and they're after the sixth.
straight. 8 p.m. on City. Million second quiz where time equals money. All right, now the Blue Jays are running out of time as they bat in the bottom of the six. They trail by seven. Angels have taken an 11-4 lead. The big bats of the Angels have gotten off to a great start. Mark Trumbull has four hits. Josh Hamilton, who bats right behind Trumbull, he has three hits. Rajay Davis trying to get things going here in the sixth. And then the guy who hits behind Hamilton's had three hits. Chris Iannetta in the middle of their lineup doing some damage. How many extra base hits do they have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven between those two players. They got their hidden shoes on. Blue Jays are going to have to Scratch their way back into this game and just string some hits together. Williams, we mentioned, he picked up his first win since June 12th, last time out against Tampa Bay. They had been in a real drought, but tonight he got a four run boost to his outing before he ever went to the mound. This ball's had a chance to be trouble, and it is gone. Rajay Davis has homer. A leadoff homer here in the sixth. His fifth home run of the season. What were we saying earlier about buckle up? You can see some fireworks tonight. It's been all angels so far. But you never know. Rajay Davis with another home run. His fifth. Had a multi home run game in Arizona. Scorches his breaking ball to left field. Ball really tearing tonight. Boy, that ball just spun on the inside part of the plate. J.P. Aaron Sebia has got one for two so far. Rose Davis and his wife are expecting their first child any time, and he is excited and very much looking forward to that. Saturday is the due dates. Oh, he's very excited. A big home run. Two balls and a strike to the Blue Jays catcher. Inside three and one. Blue Jays need base runners. You just got to get a few guys on and hope somebody runs into one with a couple of boards and be back in the ball game. That's how you get back. A walk, a blooper, an air, and a long one. Ball four. That's the start. In case you're just joining us, Mark Burley, who had been on such a roll here at this ballpark, eight and two at Rogers Center going into this start. And the Angels ambushed him in the first. They scored four runs on five hits in the first inning. Eric Ibar got it going with a solo home run with one out. Josh Hamilton drove in up there. Grant Green had an RBI. And Burley is out of the game after four innings and four batters. Gives up a season high 12 hits. Just couldn't find his spot. Uh, fastball, no command there. The change up cutter. Her ball just, just couldn't throw it where he needed to. Couldn't get it down. And you're right there waiting for him in the first inning. It's a team that's been hot. Told you that in the first inning. That this team has been hot offensively, the Angels. Got to be frustrating for both managers, Mike Sosha and for John Gibbons, to see their team playing well in September. Hey, where was that in April and May? Yeah. And that's the disappointing part of these ball games. And you know, everybody knows about the expectations for the Blue Jays, and you know they were picked to win the World Series and all that kind of stuff. Right behind them was the Angels. I, I know the Nationals were up there, and the Angels were up there also as favorites to get to the World Series. And when you look at both ball clubs, the problem has been pitching. Angels addressed their offense with Pujols and Hamilton last couple of years, but pitching has been a concern. This is a fair ball. Moises Sierra drills it off the wall in the left. Hamilton shoots it back, but Sierra has another double. 
Two on, nobody out. Now it's time for the drive of the game. Brought to you by the 2014 Honda Odyssey, the world's first minivan with a built-in vacuum. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. We've got to make a tape to this and send it to Anthony Goat because this is our drive of the game. It's also our, his first major league Grand Slam home run. Ghost, the drive of the game and the Grand Slam all in one tonight, a big hit for Anthony Ghost. And just to show how versatile he was, he bunted in his next at bat, so he's two for two. He's got a long ball and a short one. A little stall tactic now from Ionetta because that might be it for Jerome Williams. Been hit hard again here in the sixth inning. Michael Kahn is up and that's it. Yep, Mike Sosh is not messing around. He's got Michael Kahn ready, and even though he's a right-hander, the Angels have just one left-hander in the bullpen, so he's going to use a right-hander at this point, middle of the ball game. So Williams is out of it game. Anthony Ghost is the batter. Michael Kahn will face Ghost when we come back to Rogers Center. the fan. Win a trip for Ford in Toronto to see the Blue Jays take on the Tampa Bay Rays September 28th and 29th. The prize includes airfare, a hotel, chance to throw out the first pitch of the Blue Jays game, so make sure you enter the contest today. The contest closes September 16th, so enter now at bluejays.com slash allstate fan. Pitcher for the Angels is the right-hander, Michael Kahn. As Jerome Williams was staked to an early lead, just couldn't get anybody out here in the sixth. Couldn't get the ball down, so he is out. Kahn now 57 games, 335 earned run average. Left-handers have a average that is lower than the right-handers. Good fastball. Lacks movement. A little bit of a slider. And he has pitched well against the Blue Jays. Five games, four and two-thirds scoreless versus Toronto. Anthony goes with a chance to cut into that big deficit. Fouls it back. Ghost is two for two so far. First big league grand slam. Came on the first pitch he saw in the second. So he has shown him the home run. He showed him that he has speed. Now, a oh, nice little line drive. How about a triple? Just to watch him run. Thousand back. Got beat by that fastball. He's got a good fastball. That one was 96 miles an hour. Pretty straight.
another good fastball and goes is battling Khan. Anthony's 23 years old. Certainly has a lot of upside. Loaded with athletic ability. Khan and Ionetta trying to resolve this at bat. Went back door with a breaking ball and missed. Yeah, his breaking ball, Slurvy's type of slider. He's going to have to stay on top. And that has been the pitch that has really hurt Ghost in his young career. That breaking ball that breaks out of the strike zone. Staying alive. Yeah, Batola told me a great story about Ghost today that his at bats have been better. He had that 11 pitch at bat in the last series that we had. He was saying that you never saw that from Ghost before, but now he's getting into those 11 pitch at bats, 10 pitch at bats, and he's getting deep into that and saying, like, okay, now what? Well, he's learning how to hit. He's learning how to. To battle through those long at bats and come up with big base hits. This time he goes upstairs, Coon strikes him out. One down, let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Zach McAllister was the starter for Cleveland in that game. He is since out of the ball game. Cleveland won last night. Kansas City wasted an opportunity in the ninth inning to come back and tie that game. Kevin Pilar grounds it to third. A run will come in. Aaron Sebia scores. Pilar picks up the RBI, but he's thrown out at first. You know, it's not just the wild card that the Indians are back into. They're only four and a half games behind the Tigers. In the central. Boy, the Tigers are sputtering a bit right now. Of course, last night Miguel Cabrera got ejected in his first at bat. Max Scherzer, in his third attempt to win his 20th game, ended up with nothing once again. He's stuck at 19. But the Tigers, they're four and a half up. They've lost three in a row. And you see the Indians are right there. The Royals, boy, what a story that would be if they could hang on and make a run here in the postseason. Lots of great baseball coming up. Detroit right in the midst of things. Cleveland of course they play the Royals they finish up the series on Wednesday then they go to Chicago for a four game series against the White Sox and then right back against the Royals in Kansas City. And then Cleveland gets a big break. They've got Houston at home for four games. The White Sox twice more and Minnesota. For four at Minnesota end the season. Their schedule is kind of easy. If there is such a thing for a pennant contender in September. Kansas City after this Cleveland series will go into Detroit for three games. We mentioned the Cleveland Indians come to their place and then Texas. And then they go on the road to Seattle and Chicago. Seven games on the road to finish up the season. Four big games against the White Sox. That's drilled down the right side, and it is foul. I thought he hit it so hard he didn't have time to go foul. Boy, he's been swinging the bat great, hasn't he? Throwing up some extra base hits and some power. Came up with the big base hit, the eventual game winner in Minnesota the other day on a pitch just like this. High fastball, he got on top of it. Hit a double. At that time, just a little bit too quick. You see the ball hitting down the right field line, and it just curves foul. Guy hits a ball like that, the next pitch is guaranteed to be something soft, doesn't it? You would think, but he came right back with the fastball and got Reyes to foul it back. Brian Goins on deck. In the dirt, blocked by Netta. Sierra at third. 
Jose Reyes has done a terrific job of delivering clutch hits for the Blue Jays. You look at the highest batting average with runners in scoring position with a minimum of 50 plate appearances. Everybody expects Miguel Cabrera to be among the leaders. Then Jose Reyes, Alfonso Soriano, and Brian Roberts with a 385 average. That's the top four in the American League. 3-2 pitch. Popped up. Eric Ibar backs up the shortstop in the outfield, makes the catch. The inning is over. The Blue Jays score a pair, but the Angels still have a five-run lead. Ricky Ramirez. Ricky Romero will make his first relief appearance after 127 major league starts. And the crowd appreciative of seeing Romero back on the mound at Rogers Center. There are his numbers from Buffalo. He started when he was with the Bisons, 5-8, and eight, and ERA just under 6. And everybody knows the story. Romero he did not make the team out of spring training. Went down to Dunedin to rework on his Mechanics. He says it's all mental, his problems. He needs to pound down in the strike zone, not worry too much about mechanics. Just throw strikes. You throw quality pitches and you're going to be just fine. So he is back here in September. And a lot of people talked about, well, why are they bring a Romero back? They got a lot of money invested in Ricky over the next couple of years. They have to get something out of him and see what they've got. Seven and a half million dollars for two years. So Romero gets a chance to start here. I'm sure it's a... Good feeling to be back on the mound. He's 28 years old, former first round pick, 2005 of the Blue Jays. His finest season was 2011 when he was 15 and 11 with a 292 ERA. At Buffalo in 22 starts, he was 5 and 8 with a 578 ERA. Andrew Romine takes one downstairs. It's 2 and 0. There's a strike. And you can hear the crowd reaction. Uh, Ricky, a very popular Blue Jay, and rightly so. He was a leader of the pitching staff. 2010-11 had a fall off in 2012. And there's another good fastball. Yeah, once Sean Markham was traded away and Roy Halladay was traded away, Ricky was the opening day pitcher. He was their number one starter for a couple of years. Little tapper out in front of the mound. Romero gets on it quickly and throws Romine out. One down. You know, Romero, I think, got caught up in a lot of different things. I mean, he got off to a decent start in 2012. At one point, he had eight wins. And then it really fell off for him in the second half. And 
the doubts started to creep in and everybody wondered what was wrong with Ricky and I think he himself got a little bit too hung up on velocity. I think he was worried about not throwing hard enough when in fact his strength in my mind is movement location and the great secondary pitches he has. I agree with you 100 percent. We've had a couple of different catchers tell us he's one of the most difficult pitchers to catch because his ball moves all over the place. So you got to be able to throw it where you need to. Forget about how hard you're throwing it. Ricky Romero, according to John Buck and Jose Molina, was the toughest pitcher they ever had to catch. Both those guys have been around, and it's about movement. It's about movement in the strike zone, and he just needs to shoot for the middle of the plate. You know what? Tough in a good way. Toughest catcher, excuse me, pitcher to catch in a good way. A compliment that his ball is tough. You throw it over, it's tough to hit. And I remember when Jose Molina first came here and got Ricky Romero, he went up to John Buck and says, Are you having trouble catching him? He said, Absolutely. You can see the ball diving. It's 93, but it plays a lot harder than that. Sometimes you wish pitchers could hit against themselves just to see how good they are. There's so many doubts built into the game and so many negatives as part of the game that if you stand in and face yourself, if you were Ricky Romero, I think you'd be impressed. Yeah, you don't have to be perfect. Big strikeout for Romero. Getting back on track as they tied the first two here in the seventh. Like a curveball, and he's got a late breaker, and it's sharp. Well, that's a changeup grip right there. It looks like a curveball. Watch how that ball goes down and in. That's what I mean about how tough he can be. Yeah. High bar goes after the first pitch. Two great pitchers Jim Cott, Johnny Sane, and Tommy John, I'll talk about pitching to the middle to begin and work your way to the edges. I think it's a philosophy that has really been lost in this day and age. Pitchers want to make a perfect pitch on the first pitch and they find themselves behind. Oh, and one hit hard. Nice hop for Reyes. Ricky Romero is back in the big leagues. Three up, three down against the Angels. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh. It's 11 6, Los Angeles. McCarty is a proud partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. We've got to give it to Ricky Romero. First of all, smooth back into the, the big leagues and smooth. He has a one, two, three inning, a strikeout, and then this harmless ground ball to shortstop. A good start 
for Romero as he works his way back to the big leagues. Small step, but a very important step for Ricky Romero. And a good inning. Pete Walker with some encouraging words for Romero. New pitcher for the Angels is Buddy Brashears. Brashears, the left hander, the only left hander they have in their pen, making his 17th appearance. Not a problem with right handers, though. You would think that the only lefty would have problems with the righties. They're hitting 077, just one for 13. Brian Goins has hit the ball hard a couple of times. He's got nothing to show for it. He is 0 for 4 so far in this game. Bo Shears is 25 years old. He's a former fourth round pick in 2004 by the Angels. This is his sixth season. He made his major league debut August 10th at Cleveland and struck out the only batter he faced, Jason Kipnis. He was a starter in his first two seasons in the minor leagues, and then they made the transition to a relief pitcher. Started the year in double A. Did some work at Arkansas and Salt Lake, their triple A team. And here he is in the big leagues. They've had a changeover in their bullpen since the last time we saw the Angels, and that wasn't that long ago. They have had many changes, some due to injuries, some due to inconsistencies. Laurie reaches for it and pops it up right over the mound. The shortstop Ibar takes charge and makes the catch. Two down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Beautiful shot of CN Tower parked around all those buildings in downtown Toronto. Two down. Bo Shears went to Calhoun Community College in Decatur, Alabama. When you say, well, that probably doesn't have too many former players that made it to the big leagues. Well, how about J.J. Hoover of the Reds? The big J.J. Hoover. Mm -hmm. He's having a heck of a year again. This has popped up. Center fielder Colin Cowgill gets there and retires Lynn. Quick inning for Bo Shears. Takes him just six pitches to retire the side and over. Ricky's back for a second inning. In baseball, September 20th through the 24th, right here at Rogers Center. The Blue Jays Hall of Famer Roberto Alomar will host a showcase baseball tournament at Rogers Center. 
highlighting some of Canada's best amateur baseball players with college eligibility. Gareth Morgan, an outfielder, and Josh Naylor, a first baseman, have been selected to represent the Ontario roster. Tournament passes are now available at BlueJays.com slash T12. Ricky Romero back for a second inning of work. Retired the side in order. A little different caliber of hitters for Romero this inning. Mike Trout, Mark Trumbo, and Josh Hamilton. This should be very interesting. The best hitters that the Angels have to offer. Ball on his strike. Mark Burley back on the bench. He had a rough start to this ball game. Gave up a season high 12 hits, eight earned runs. Burley's ERA started at 388, ends up at 418. Trout gets jammed and fights it off. Shortest outing of the season for Mark Burley, also. He did four and a third innings at Detroit. That was way back on April the 10th. Yeah, he has been very consistent, and this certainly was the exception to the rule for Burley. Boy, Romero really tied up Mike Trout with a pitch down and in. You don't have to throw it to him. Make a pitch. Missed with the curveball. Full count. Boy, look at that pitch. Started out over the middle of the plate, broke all the way inside with the good movement. Cut right in on him. 91 miles an hour. Right in on his hand. Really tied him up. And if he could throw a change up for a strike here. Might have him in a swing mode. He might chase a bat change up. It's this ball in the right fly ball for Sierra. Trout's retired one down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Calls through 74 pitches, 44 strikes in that outing. He goes up against David Price, who has allowed just two hits over seven innings, but two runs. Johnny Gomes an RBI. Jared Saltalamakia a sacrifice fly, and that's all there has been. Boston has been out hit three to two, but lead two to nothing. That's the only important number. The score. They have pitched well. They are the best pitching team in the American League East. Mark Trumbo has had a big night. He's hit three doubles and a home run. He's the 27th Angel with three doubles in one game. Devon White's on that list. Bobby Bonds as well. And of course, Albert Pujols. Wow. Is he hot or what? And Rajay Davis played that off to the side. And Trumbo's going to end up at second. And he nonchalanted that ball ate him up. It was hit so hard. It was still hard when it got to the left fielder. It's an air on Davis. Ball hit hard. Once again by Trumbo. You're right. And then Rajay jogs over there. Hits off of him. And then he doesn't get after it. He still had a shot if he comes up throwing right here to get Trumbo because the ball was hit so hard. He was just at first base. But it goes as a hit in an error. Fifth hit for Trumbo, his career high in hits. A five hit night, and Hamilton's had three hits. This is how you turn on a pitch right there, and you hit it hard. That is five straight balls that he has hit hard tonight. Hamilton lifts it into center field. Should be an easy play for Ghost. He moves over to his right, makes the catch. Tumble holds his ground at second. Two down. 
So Ricky Romero gave up a single to Trumbo. Now he'd love to end this inning right here and keep Trumbo at second. Chris Ionetta's had a big night. Ionetta's had a three hit night. Single in the first, doubled in the fifth, and homered in the sixth. Chris Ionetta, his second year with the Angels, came to Anaheim from Colorado. Next year, of course, the Blue Jays are going to have to rebuild their rotation once again. You would think that R.A. Dickey and Mark Burley are going to be in the rotation. I think the rest of the rotation is up in the air, but I think Ricky Romero is going to be in contention for a spot. All question marks, you know, for, for next season. Burley, Dickey, and then a lot of candidates. For this year, though, you got to give them a start, don't you? At some point, somewhere. Now, has, has Rogers earns another start sure. the way he's pitched. He's, he's got 15 pitched consecutive well. scoreless innings. I think you could pick your spots, and certainly we have talked about the schedule and how you want to make sure you put your best foot forward when you're playing those postseason contending ball clubs. And right now, at this stage, neither Ricky Romero nor Kyle Drabeck would be put in that class, given the fact that. They're just coming back from the minors, so you want to put guys that have been starting on a regular basis. Bounced in front of home there in CB of blocks. But that's interesting. We talk about the Blue Jays and their schedule. Where are you going to find an opportunity to get Ricky Romero a start? When you think about it, the Blue Jays are running out of games. Angels. Then you have the Orioles, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the White Sox. That might be an opportunity. Give them a spot start in that White Sox game. That might be it right there, the, the makeup game. Yep. Because you've got uh, the pennant contenders. Every other game after this yep. Angels series, except for the White Sox game, is against teams fighting for the postseason. Ball on this strike. Cole Calhoun. Calhoun hit a ground rule RBI double in the fifth. That drove in Chris Ionetta, who had doubled ahead of him. That was the final batter for Mark Burley. The Angels knocked Burley out in the fifth. Trumbull homered, Hamilton homered, Ionetta doubled, and then had Calhoun doubled. And that knocked Mark Burley out. Calhoun fights it off. He's a good-looking hitter. He hangs in there tough against lefties. We mentioned he's hit over 360 in the big leagues this year against lefty pitching. Mike Sosha talked about that, how he hangs in there against the lefties, meaning he doesn't leak that front shoulder out. He fouls off tough pitches. Right now he's choking up trying to make contact against Ricky. Got a piece of it. Calhoun, an eighth round pick out of Arizona State, 2010. Just, just his fourth pro season. Romero reunited with J.P. Aaron Sevia, trying to retire Cole Calhoun. Calhoun hits it to right. That's going to be in front of Sierra. Plays it on the hop. Here's the throw to the plate. It is not in time. Calhoun with another RBI. Trumbull comes in to score. Calhoun is second RBI of the night. That gives him 23 for the season. Mike Sosha did not play him against left-handers. Calhoun, his first five weeks in the big leagues. But he's starting to play him now, and he's delivering. 
Delivered against Mark Burley, and now he delivers here against Ricky Romero. He has a two-hit night. Solid single to right field. Sierra has chance or thoughts of trying to get the runner at the plate, but with a couple of outs, he's running on contact. You're not going to get him when you lay back like that. Grant Green, the second baseman. That's the first pitch strike. Lori. In the dirt, scooped by Lynn. The inning is over. The Angels add a run. They've taken a 12 6 lead. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Time now for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. On Sportsnet One, it'll be Arizona at Los Angeles. The Diamondbacks take on the LA Dodgers. And the Dodgers really have put things together. Edinson Volquez makes a start against Trevor Cahill for the D-backs. As the Dodgers won 8-1 over Arizona last night, Ricky Molasco picked up the win. New pitcher for the Angels is Ryan Brashear, making his fourth appearance since coming up to the big leagues. Second stint with this ball club. He was up in May for just a little bit and then just got called back up through a couple of shutout innings on Monday. A former six round draft pick back in 2007. Sinker slider. Type of repertoire from the right hander. Just three games this year for the Angels. Freddie Boshears goes one inning in perfect inning. Ricky Romero talking with Mark Burley and Ricky had a good outing. The air cost him a run. But he had a one two three first inning of work. Rajay Davis takes one outside. Davis batting fifth tonight. Homered his last time up. Had a low line drive over the wall and left. It's this one hard. Josh Hamilton battling the lights. He's able to make the catch. One down. Save during the plumbing, heating, and electrical expert sale only at home hardware and building center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Josh Hamilton has been challenged out there right in the lights. He stays with it, plucks it right out of the air. Now he's having a lot of fun with his teammates. They're like, hey, way to catch one. Make it look easy. Had it all the way. Had to catch it. It was going to hit him in the chest if he didn't. <laughs> J. Pierre and Seaman has singled, grounded out, and walked. He scored a pair of runs tonight. 
Lines this one down the right side. This is trouble if it's fair. It is a foul ball. Toby Bassner, the first base umpire, had a good beat on it. He was camped out right on the right field foul line and made the call. And Sebia just missed an extra base hit. Blue Jays have nine hits. They have been out hit 18 to 9 by the Angels. The season high for the Angels in hits is 20. Popped up behind home plate. Ionetta over near the Blue Jays dugout. Power play. Brazier in the Triple A went five and two this year with ten saves. Had 57 strikeouts in 56 and two thirds. Been mainly a reliever in his career. Started off his minor league career in 2007. He was a reliever for a couple of years. They let him start for a couple of seasons. 2009, 2010, moved him back to the bullpen. He looks to me like a reliever. It's a little bit like Neil Walker with. A very abbreviated arm stroke. Neil Wagner. Of course, not Walker, the second baseman. He Tyler. looks like him, doesn't he? Yeah, no bet. Square shouldered, strong arm. Doesn't look like he has Neil Wagner's fastball either. Or his split. There he is. Don't they, don't you think they look the same? Kind of similar. They're both right handed. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Aaron Sebia hits a high fly ball that Hamilton waits on. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Soriano is two for four with two home runs. He's driven in three. How about Mark Reynolds? Reynolds is two for four with a couple of RBIs. Former Oriole. Reynolds hit his 18th against Miguel Gonzalez. He's been working with Kevin Long, I've been reading. And he's getting some results. Kevin Long, the hitting coach for the Yankees. I think the best in the business. Henry Arudia is back with the Orioles, the young Cuban outfielder. Pretty good looking hitter. Sierra hits a high fly ball to the left. Josh Hamilton makes all three outs in the eighth. We'll go to the ninth. It's all Angels. They've got a six run lead.
with Connected East Ontario, West End Pacific on Sportsnet 360. It'll be Blue Jays Express. And on Sportsnet, one more baseball. Arizona at Dodger Stadium to take on L.A. And lots more coming up. Make sure you stay tuned for Connected. Coming right up after this game, Luis Perez making his second appearance since coming back from the minor leagues. Yeah, last worked in that series in Arizona when the Blue Jays were just there on September the 4th. He ended up picking up the loss in that game, just two-thirds of an inning. A hit, an earned run, a couple of strikeouts. That was the encouraging thing. His breaking ball is back, coming back from the Tommy John surgery. And Lou Perez is going to be a very interesting guy, I think, heading into next year. Mike Nickius has also taken over. He will finish up this ball game behind the plate for the Blue Jays as he takes over for J.P. and Sebia. Mike Nickius is 30 years old. He has spent parts of three seasons in the big leagues with the Mets. This is his first game with the Blue Jays in the big leagues. Andrew Romine has gone one for three with a sacrifice bunt. He gets sawed off. Reyes has to unload in a hurry, and he does. Perez got deep in the kitchen of Romain. Yeah, that's why I think he's going to be an interesting guy. Uh, Reyes has to play deep. Shows off that arm strength, throwing on the run and accurately over at first base to Adam Lynn. But Perez was one of the Blue Jays' better left-handed relievers last season before he got hurt. Missed all of this year. He's going to fit prominently, I think, in the bullpen next year. No question. He's got a good arm, healthy, confident. And what is he just learning to do right now? Learning how to pitch. He's learning how to pitch. Well, we had a great conversation with him in Minnesota, didn't we? Sitting on the bench talking about big hitters like Chris Davis and David Ortiz. Off the end of the bat. Two ground ball outs. He also said one of the, the hitters who has helped him the most as a pitcher was the ex-ball player Fernando Tatis. If you remember Fernando Tatis, who was a big home run hitter from his homeland, he told him that you know, hitting is hard. Up and in, down and away. That's what he's working on. That's what he calls Pat Henkin, the bullpen coach. He calls him up and in and down and away because Henkin's constantly preaching to, hey, Louie, throw it up and in, down and away soft. You'd be good. And you, you ask him, you say, what do you think of that? He goes, it works. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Henkin utilized that to a Cy Young Award. Two outs. Eric Ibar. He got the night off and running for the Angels. He had a solo home run off Burley in the first with one out. That started a four-run first inning. The Angels would add a run in the third, three more in the fifth, three in the sixth, and a run in the eighth. First of three against the Angels. We'll be right back at, at it again tomorrow night. R.A. Dickey will go up against C.J. Wilson, the left-hander, and in the series finale on Thursday night, Jay Happ will take them out against Jason Vargas. A couple of lefties hook up. Final time the Blue Jays and Angels will play this season. Off-speed pitch, little lazy pop-up behind shortstop. Reyes shuffling out. Good inning for Louis Perez. Retires the side in the order. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. The Angels have a six-run lead.
September 17th. Three night games all beginning at 7.07. The last time you'll get to see Mariano Rivera pitch in person here at Rogers Center. Blake Mariano will retire after this season. For tickets, call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. You can always log on to BlueJays.com and order your tickets online. Or stop by most Rogers Plus locations and pick up your tickets to see the New York Yankees at Rogers Center for a final time. The New York Yankees will open up the 2014 home schedule for the Blue Jays. First, a quick trip down to Tampa to start the year. Anthony goes, hits it off the end of the bat. Long run for Josh Hamilton. He slides and makes the catch. Josh Hamilton has recorded the last four outs in left field. Time to pick on somebody else. He's had a line drive in the lights. He made the catch. He had a nice high fly, easy ball by Aaron Sevia. And then Sierra to his right. Now he gets a sliding ball to his right towards the foul line. Four in a row. Kevin Pilar. Kevin's got over three. He picked up an RBI with a ground down in the sixth inning. His eighth RBI of the season. He gets jammed. We've got an interesting reunion with Pilar and the Angels TV analyst. Mark Gubaza, who was a great pitcher with Kansas City and later on with the Angels, was the coach for Kevin Pilar in high school. Chaminade High School in California. Gubazar was excited, and there's Mark sitting in the booth. He works with Victor Rojas, and Gubazar was excited to see Pilar get his first big league hits, um, get the hit in Yankee Stadium. His daughter actually told him, said, Kevin's up, and they ran, and they watched it on television. Got a chance to watch, watch that. Pops this one up, left side of the infield. Shortstop Ibar calls for it. Pilar's retired, two down, Blue Jays down to their last out. You know, another interesting thing about that, their rival back, back in the day back there, Shamanov's big rival was Calabasas High School, coached by, you know who? Brett, Brett Saberhagen. Yep. How about that? Teammates and pitchers in the Royals rotation in the heyday when they won the World Series in 85. Saberhagen and Gubazad, Danny Jackson, of course. Reyes hits the fly ball to the right. This should do it. Calhoun makes the catch, and the Angels win the opener. 12-6. to 6. They pound out 18 hits. Mark Trumbo becomes the first Angel ever to get five hits in a game and score five runs. He had a big night. Game two tomorrow night. Ari Dickey will go to the mound. Stay tuned. Connected. Coming right up on all four channels. Blue Jays Express on Sportsnet 360. More baseball on 